Welcome back to the Dusty Tome. We've got a weird little novelty story for you this time. We all love some Lovecraft, and we know he's got some serious skills, but who knew Minecraft was writing these creepers already at eight years old? Even more surprising is that this one, The Mystery of the Graveyard, has been in print multiple times. Sheesh. I could barely make a Star Wars figure stand up straight at eight years old. Holy mackerel. Lovecraft wrote this somewhere between late 1898 and early 1899, and was apparently undecided on the title, because the manuscript says, The Mystery of the Graveyard, or A Dead Man's Revenge, a detective story. Let's take a fun romp through the very late 1800s with our little buddy Lovecraft and see if we can crack this graveyard case with him. And we'll see you on the other side. The Mystery of the Graveyard or A Dead Man's Revenge A Detective Story by H.P. Lovecraft Chapter 1 The Burns' Tomb It was noon in the little village of Mainville, and a sorrowful group of people were standing around the Burns' tomb. Joseph Burns was dead. When dying, he had given the following strange orders. Before you put my body in the tomb, drop this ball onto the floor at a spot marked a. He then handed a small golden ball to the rector. The people greatly regretted his death. After the funeral services were finished, Mr. Dobson, the rector, said, My friends, I will now gratify the last wishes of the deceased. So saying, he descended into the tomb to lay the ball on the spot marked A. Soon the funeral party began to be impatient, and after a time, Mr. Charlie Green, the lawyer, descended to make a search. Soon, he came up with a frightened face and said, Mr. Dobson is not there! Chapter 2 Mysterious Mr. Bell it was 3.10 o'clock in the afternoon when the doorbell of the Dobson mansion rang loudly and the servant on going to the door found an elderly man with black hair and side whiskers. He asked to see Miss Dobson. Upon arriving in her presence, he said, Miss Dobson, I know where your father is and for 10,000 pounds I will store him. My name is Mr. Bell. Mr. Bell, said Miss Dobson, will you excuse me from the room for a moment? Certainly, replied Mr. Bell. In a short time, she returned and said, Mr. Bell, I understand you. You have abducted my father and hold him for a ransom. Chapter 3 At the Police Station it was 3.20 o'clock in the afternoon when the telephone bell at the North End police station rang furiously and Gibson, the telephone man, inquired what was the matter. Have found out about father's disappearance, a woman's voice said. I am Miss Dobson and father has been abducted. Send King John. King John was a famous Western detective. Just then a man rushed in and shouted, Oh terrors, come to the graveyard. Chapter 4 The West Window Now let us return to the Dobson Mansion. Mr. Bell was rather taken aback by Miss Dobson's plain speaking, but when he recovered his speech he said, Don't put it quite so plain, Miss Dobson, for I- He was interrupted by the entrance of King John, who with a brace of revolvers in his hands, barred all egress by the doorway. But quicker than thought, Bell sprang to a west window and jumped. Ah! Chapter 5 The Secret of the Grave Now let us return to the station house. 
After the excited visitor had calmed somewhat, he could tell his story straighter. He had seen three men in the graveyard shouting, Bell! Bell! Where are you, old man? And acting very suspiciously. He then followed them, and they entered the Burns' tomb. He then followed them in, and they touched a spring at a point marked A, and then disappeared. I wish King John were here, said Gibson. What's your name? John Spratt, replied the visitor. Chapter 6 The Chase for Bell. Now let us return to the Dobson Mansion again. King John was utterly confounded at the sudden movement of Bell, but when he recovered from his surprise, his first thought was of Chase. Accordingly, he started in pursuit of the abductor. He tracked him down to the railroad station and found to his dismay that he had taken the train for Kent, a large city toward the south, and between which and Mainville there existed no telegraph or telephone. The train had just started. Chapter 7 The Degro Hackman The Kent train started at 1035. In about 1036, an excited, dusty, and tired man rushed into the Mainville hack office and said to a Negro hackman who was standing by the door, If you can take me to Kent in 15 minutes, I will give you a dollar. I don't see how I'm to get there, said the Negro. I haven't got a decent pair of hosses and I have two dollars, shouted the traveler. All right, said the hackman. Chapter 8 Bell's surprise. It was 11 o'clock at Kent. All of the stores were closed but one. A dingy, dirty little shop down at the West End. It lay between Kent Harbor and the Kent and Mainville Railroad. In the front room, a shabbily dressed person of doubtful age was conversing with a middle-aged woman with gray hair. I've agreed to do the job, Lindy, he said. Bill will arrive at 11.30, and the carriage is ready to take him down to the wharf, where a ship for Africa sails tonight. But if King John were to come, queried Lindy, then we'd get nabbed, and Bill would be hung, replied the man. Just then a rap sounded at the door. Are you Bell? inquired Lindy. Yes, was the response. And I called to 1035, and King John got left, so we are all right. At 1140, the party reached the landing and saw a ship loom up in the darkness. The Khedive of Africa was painted on the hull, and just as they were to step on board, a man stepped forward in the darkness and said, John Bell, I arrest you in the Queen's name. It was King John. Chapter 9 The Trial The day of the trial had arrived, and a crowd of people had gathered around the little grove, which served for a courthouse in summer, to hear the trial of John Bell on the charge of kidnapping. Mr. Bell, said the judge, what is the secret of the Burns' tomb? I will tell you this much, said Bell. If you go into the tomb, and you touch a certain spot marked A, you find out. Now where is Mr. Dobson? queried the judge. Here, said a voice behind them, and the figure of Mr. Dobson himself loomed up in the doorway. How did you get here? was chorused. It's a long story, said Dobson. Chapter 10 Dobson's Story when I went down into the tomb, said Dobson, everything was darkness. I could see nothing. But finally I discerned a letter A printed in white on the onyx floor. I dropped a ball on the letter and immediately a trap door opened and a man sprang up. It was this man here, he said, pointing at Bell, who stood trembling on the prisoner's dock. And he pulled me down into a brilliantly lighted and palatial apartment where I have lived until today. One day, a young man rushed in and exclaimed, The secret is revealed! It was, it was gone. He did not see me. 
Once Bell left his key behind and I took the impression in wax and the next day was spent in filing keys to fit the lock. The next day, my key fitted and the next day, which is today, I escaped. Chapter 11 The Mystery Unveiled Why did the late Jay Burns ask you to put the ball there at A? queried the judge. To get me into trouble, replied Dobson. He and Francis Burns, his brother, plotted against me for years, and I knew not in what way they would harm me. Seize Francis Burns, yelled the judge. Chapter 12 Conclusion Francis Burns and John Bell were sent to prison for life. Mr. Dobson was cordially welcomed by his daughter, who, by the way, had become Mrs. King John. Lindy and her accomplice were sent to Newgate for 30 days as aiders and abettors of a criminal escape. The End Back page, price, 25 cents. Wow, I would totally give little eight-year-old Lovecraft a quarter for that story. But 25 cents in 1899 is equivalent to $9.44 today. Ah, what the heck. We had a lot of fun putting that one together. I say we give little Lovecraft a 10 spot and take him for an ice cream. We hope you enjoyed that silly and fun little sidestep off the beaten path. But no worries, next episode is surely going to make you lose some sleep as we head back towards existential dread and crack the book at the Dusty Tome. <laughs>